Welcome. Uh, in this video here, I'm going to be going over uh, wiring up the opposite ends of these DB9 connectors. Uh, I've got my Z axis and uh, Y axis done already. Uh, as you can see, I got my wires all ran through my tubes now. Uh, conduit. It's actually PVC pipe, three quarter inch. Uh, water pipe. Uh, none of it's glued together. Uh, as many of you probably know, that they actually fit uh, fairly snug. Uh, I didn't want to glue none of it together so I could pull it apart. It's easy access to route all the wires through then and just set the fittings in, in place uh, as necessary. Um, I've got all my home switches run through one side and my stepper motors run through the other one. Uh, this should pretty much prevent any interference. Uh, the shielding on the home switches, uh, that's the purpose of having shielding uh, to prevent interference. Uh, but if you do run them together, there's still a, a slight chance of interference. Uh, and it will cause your stepper motors to lose steps. Uh, so I'm hoping to prevent all the interference by putting them through another tube like that. So I shouldn't have no problems there. Uh, and as you can see, I got this one tube that runs over this direction here. Uh, this is my A-axis. I do believe I said one video why, you know, by mistake. Uh, this is my A-axis. Uh, this one will be for my uh, lathe attachment, uh, grinding attachment. Uh, I'm going to be cutting gears on it. doing any machine that I need to do horizontally uh, with the vertical head. Um, I'm going to build a grinding attachment uh, that will mount approximately over in this direction here somewhere with the grinding wheel on it. And the lathe attachment will work off that. I'm going to be uh, putting together a few programs. I have already started on some in my CADs. Uh, for uh, grinding down cam lobes for quarter scale V8 engines of uh, various durations lifts. Uh, we'll also be doing uh, the crank throws uh, with it uh, on the crank for internal balancing. Right now, I'll go over all that eventually here in time. Right now, I kind of want to go through and show you my mess here. I call it a mess, it's really not. Uh, these are my stepper motor wires. Uh, as you can see, as I was uh, installing them one at a time, high label. Uh, each end so that way there's no chance of getting them confused uh, and if one should get them confused and hook it up it would just uh, say for example you want to move your y-axis but your z-axis moves so you'd realize you made a mistake there uh, and you could just leave them hooked up at the other end there at the steppers and switch them out at the controller up, up there to the correct axis and that wouldn't make no difference there but this saves a lot of Guess takes all the guesswork out of it pretty much. Uh, you can see here I got my A axis, my Y axis, I got my X axis, and my Z. Um, my home switch wires, these I did not label um, because I'm just going to run a power a source I could have, uh, but it's really not necessary. No, not for me doing this. I'll just run a power source at the other end prior to hooking up the switch to the 
other wires to the switch rather uh, I've probed it with the multimeter at this end for current uh, and then I'll hook them up as they should be and as you can see here I do that two separate tubes like I mentioned my stepper motors run through one uh, my home switch through another to prevent interference uh, a lot of people don't they'll run them side by side uh, I don't know if you look kind of close at this I believe I could zoom in enough to see here I'm actually pretty glad I did put two separate chambers for these to run through because it had been kind of a little difficult running them all through that one three quarter inch tube and I've got my z-axis all wired up to uh, both ends this is all done it's ready to go uh, I just put heat shrink on that one end yeah, what I'll do when I get this all done is I'll just take some twist ties, wire uh, looms, uh, most likely, and just uh, mop this up on the wall or something out of the way. And then you can see here I got plenty of movement here uh, with this wire here to go in these directions too. And if I wanted to, I could make some kind of a hook to to where um, my actual connection. Uh, well above the surface. I uh, won't have to worry about cooling getting into it or nothing that way. I shouldn't have to worry about that anyways. Um, and right now I'm <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I'm waiting for the soldering iron to get up to temperature and I'm gonna tin these four wires here. Uh, if you recall in the first videos group I put together uh, got black green red and on that other end that stepper was blue and I mentioned this is white uh, that's the only difference that blue will be white and this one's gonna be my y-axis uh, these will be the mill plug done the same way as the female plug um, just because it's got a mill end on it. Uh, once I get up into the control panel and get started on them four plugs, two of them will all be mill as well. Uh, they will house the quarter watt current set resistor. This will be done the same way as I'm going to be doing on these ones. I'll put together a short clip on how I'm doing this. i uh, setting up the tripod back here so you guys can actually see uh, fairly well what I'm doing is a bit tricky at times uh, when I get up into the control panel up here I'll set my tripod up somehow and just work right off of my table here that's obviously a mess right now kind of hard to keep everything in order when you got too many projects going on but I'm gonna get that iron all warmed up She's on right now. It shouldn't take but 10 or 15 minutes once it gets up to temperature. And get these wires all tinned here. And I get to sit up on the tripod and get going on that. Alright, I'm all set up on this mill connector now, DB9 mill connector. Uh, Got it zoomed in pretty well here. I think you guys can see a little bit better this time uh, how I'm doing this. Uh, so it is a little tricky uh, with this setup the way I got it. Being the wire short, there's really not much room for me to get a hold of it here and actually have this set up on the table and uh, recording it, what have you. But I'm going to get started on this. Uh, my white wire is my blue wire, if you recall. I'm going to start on my right, work my way to the left. Uh, give that a shot first to see if that works. It is a tad tricky to get to.
And I always take the first wire and I let it set for a second or so. That's pretty much holding that connector in, in a, the spot that it's going to be required to stay at. What I try to do is prior to it, each one that I do, uh, kind of bend the wire over so it's a little bit easier come in contact. Relieve some of the stress on it, I suppose. Fairly easy to do. These wires do get warm, so you got to work pretty fairly quick. And I do shake a tad. Do two coffee and pop. I a lot of pop. I don't drink much coffee at all. I am pretty much a popaholic. Last one here. Might need to put a little more solder on that guy. Yeah, I don't think so. Looks like it'll probably be pretty much good to go right where it's at. I hope my hands wasn't in the way in the video. I can hardly do this and watch the video while I'm doing it, so I apologize. You couldn't see sometimes. Uh, I'll go back and check them with the wire here to make sure I'm not fridged. I don't know where. They are pretty close together there. So what I do in this case is take a, a small screwdriver. Just go in between them, spread them hands apart very carefully. And then try it again. Looks fine now. There's no bridge there. Uh, no bridge. No bridge on this side. Let's spread them apart too. The wires are kind of close. I'm gonna have to double check that. I mentioned before that when you go to put this in the shell, uh, just make sure you get your wires straight. And if you're ever unsure about it, why don't you get it in the shell and just before, uh, prior to putting on your top cover, uh, run something down through in between them and double check to make sure there's not a bridge there. Make sure your wires aren't touching. Uh, they are very close together. easy is just to take a small screwdriver and you can see us it's a very small rubber screwdriver. I might have an eight inch tip on it if that. Just spread them and pins apart a little bit. It's done the same way as the, the other ones that I did. I just wanted to put this one together quickly so I could show you how I did this on the mail pin. Uh, and the only difference actually is that white wire uh, on the other ones was a blue wire. I'm going to put one more short clip together on doing the ends, the male ends, up at the control panel that will house the quarter watt current set resistor. Uh, and it will be done the same way as this. When 
I do it, I'll go ahead and pin it all so it's all ready to go. It's not necessary to put videos together now on all my tinning um, and fill in these cups. I've already covered all that um, on them four that I'm going to be doing up there at the control for the control panel. Uh, the only difference will be I'll flip the cup over and put the current set, the set resistor on the two uh, backside outside terminals. Uh, which is pin 1 and 5. Uh, these are 6, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, same as on the female connectors. Uh, that makes the only difference is that white wire is white prior to uh, other than being blue. I like to come off the steppers. Uh, but I'll get that set up here pretty soon and get going on them. Hey guys. Uh, didn't quite have the room to set my tripod up over here uh, where I currently solder a knees up. Uh, zoom out here and you can see I'm working in a pretty tight space here. Uh, wanted to briefly go over this one here I got. Uh, this done. This is the first uh, mill. Uh, DB9 with the set current resistor in place. Uh, it was fairly easy to do. Uh, working over here prior, or, um, as compared to working on that table, is a little tricky. But other than that, it's it's all done the same way. Uh, that's the current set resistor between pins one and five. Uh, everything is nice and solid. I got good connections everywhere on it. I should be all right on that. Let's see if I can loosen it up a little bit up here. The soldering is a bit tricky to do. Uh, some spots I probably got actually just a little uh, too much soldering on it. Uh, it's not bridged nowhere. back and on my black wire here you can see off to the left it's kind of got a big blob on the top. I'll go back and heat that up with the soldering iron. Remove a little bit of that. Uh, not the prettiest soldering jobs by far but uh, it should work all right. I don't think I'll have any problems with it. As I mentioned before, a lot of people put heat shrink over top of their fittings. Uh, they solder one. Obviously, you slide your heat shrink over it first. Uh, personally, I don't think it's necessary. A lot of people live by it, but everybody has their own ways of doing things. A lot of what it is, a lot of times too, is if you get your heat shrink and it's such small quarters that you're working in here uh, the heat from the gun will actually cause your heat shrink to start shrinking uh, on the wires of the wires adjacent to it uh, and you're pretty much SOL then you'll have to cut your heat shrink off or whatever because then it's that'd be a bit tricky to do I don't know how they do exactly would do that um, other than stripping your wires up here further, uh, bringing your heat shrink up and down this direction a few inches away from your terminals, then solder it. And then slide your heat shrink up and heat it up and shrink it. But this is pretty much going to sum up this. Uh, group of videos that I'm putting together on soldering up these DB9 connectors. Uh, if I run into any issues, once I get this all hooked up or anything, I'll I'll come back and I'll put together a group of, of videos of uh, troubleshooting and um, what have you. But this will probably do it for now, I suppose. Thanks for taking the time to view my videos, guys.